everyone and thanks for joining us for our five questions with series. Today we are joined by Professor Louise Hara, who is one of the leading experts in the field of solar physics. She is currently the director at the Physical Meteorological Observatory in Davos and a professor of astrophysics at ETH Zurich in Switzerland. But we are pleased to say that Louise grew up very close to Armagh Observatory and Planetarium in Lurgan, Northern Ireland. So Louise, thank you very much for joining us. I know you're very busy um, at the moment, so thanks for giving up a little bit of your time. And the education team, we've put together um, some questions that we really want to ask you. Um, so the first question um, is, what does a typical working day look like for yourself? Oh, it varies from day to day because there's, I guess, there's multiple, multiple jobs to do. So part of it is teaching. So we have master's students and bachelor's students and PhD students. Um, part of it is research. So my research um, revolves around understanding the activity on the sun and the solar wind that comes from the sun, the explosions that come from the sun. Um, and using the spacecraft data, so planning, observing on how to use the spacecraft to get the data that you need to understand it, and working on the design of new instruments um, and planning those, coming up with ideas for those future space missions um, coming up. And then, as you mentioned, I'm director of an institute in Davos, so I have management and responsibilities there as well. Yeah. So, but days are kept pretty busy then. You yeah, have to juggle, it's juggle quite a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's interesting trying to juggle things in this particular time that we are experiencing. Yes, yeah. And we were wondering what led you to the world of astronomy? Um, I think it was by accident. It definitely wasn't planned. So, I mean, I think many children do, and I was certainly one of them you were fascinated by space and my primary school trip to the planetarium was a memorable one and that's I, I think the planetarium is really important in that way that it gives you the excitement of looking up and seeing what's what's there um i think when i was in school i didn't realize you could really get jobs in in astrophysics or in space science so i, I wasn't you know, it wasn't a drive for me at school because I didn't know somebody from Lurgan could do that. <laughs> 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 kind of thinking it as a, a dominantly a NASA thing. I don't think I was even aware of the European Space Agency at school. So um, I did maths and physics at Queen's and that's doing those subjects open up doors to teaching or engineering or accountancy or whatever. It's quite a wide range of careers you can go into yeah. so I still I, I, I did that because I like maths particularly um, and enjoyed physics at university and then when I had an opportunity to do a PhD in solar physics that's when I realized I could work with spacecraft the rest of my career wow yeah, yeah, yeah. So it definitely wasn't planned okay yeah sometimes the best things aren't <laughs> And would you have any words of wisdom for anybody who's sort of thinking of getting into the world of astronomy? Um, any particular um, things that they might need to do? Or I think um, it's really follow your passion and don't be afraid of contacting people who are working in those fields mm. and get advice because most people I work with love to see enthusiasm of people you know, from a young age to school age, wanting to ask questions about the world around us, how things work. Um, and people are happy to encourage, to advise, um, to give support, which I didn't know who to contact yeah. at, at my school years. Um, so I think it's not, not to be afraid to ask, because if people don't answer, they may just be busy and somebody yeah. else will answer. Yeah, yeah. And have a phone conversation with them. I was going to say visit, but you can't currently. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, meeting up with people, visit places, exploring the internet. Um, but definitely follow what you're interested in. Yeah. And there's, there's careers in 
in working in spacecraft, you don't need to go the academic route, you can go an apprenticeship route, so you can leave school and be involved in developing instruments for a spacecraft through the electronics or the software. There's so many different routes and so many different skill sets that are needed. So if you're an incredibly organized person, you could become a project manager and lead the team. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you're, um, and you need to be a good communicator for that and incredibly organized. Some people are not organized, but they're amazing software engineers. Yes. Um, or you could be brilliant at electronics. If you've got, you know, a seven-year-old at home who's playing with electronic kits, they could be that person who's going to build the next brains of an instrument that flies in space. So there's a lot of different ways you can get into working in that area. And there's a lot of industry around the UK and Ireland that is involved in space and obviously countries um, around the rest of the world. But yeah, there's lots of opportunities I didn't think of when I was at school. Yeah, yeah. So sort of looking for them and playing to your strengths as well. Yeah, and not, like there's so many. Ask, not being able to afraid to send people emails and ask yeah. what do you advise I do or how do I get experience? Because there, there's lots of companies and there's um, space agencies around the world. They provide opportunities for summer internships, that kind of thing where you can experience for a couple of months what that world's like. Mm. Do you, um, is that something you want to do for the rest of your life? Yeah, 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 yeah. And that, I suppose as your, your career shows, you can go do different things throughout that. There's mm -hmm. plenty you can do within a career. Yeah. In you can do. Physics, yeah fantastic um and i know like it, from what you've said already it seems like you really enjoy your job or passionate about it but are there any, what has been the most challenging aspect of your career um i think probably the i've always been involved in space instrumentation from okay yeah from when i started and it's a very long term commitment <laughs> Yeah. So, for example, in the Solar Orbiter mission that was launched in February this year, I was involved in that for 20 years. Wow. So it's a long-term commitment and it's not your full-time job during all of that, obviously, yeah. but it's something that you work with, you think about, you dream about. <laughs> yeah. Uh. That time. And you have to fight to get the funding with your collaborators across Europe and the US. So you have to get the governments to work together. So it's a, as well as being a technical challenge, it's a political challenge um, as well. So pushing to get those to the point of launch is a big thing. And there's lots of ups and downs. There's lots of technical challenges. There's, you know, you're within a tight budget and a tight schedule, the pressure's high. So they, those kind of things are, are very challenging um, and can be very pressured at times. But the result is, like this week, um, we opened the doors on our instruments and oh. we got the footage. You know, it's you, all those years of, of work and you, ah, we've got the first image yeah, yeah, this week. Yeah. So it's, um, it's, a, it, it's challenging, but it has real pluses as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all worth it sort of in the end. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, and you mentioned the instrumentation on um, ACES solar, or solar Orbiter um, and working on it for 20 years. So how did you feel whenever it, it finally um, launched in February? Really interesting experience because we, so we, we managed to launch it before this peak of coronavirus. Yes, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We were really lucky time-wise that we could all be there. So the... A lot of the engineers that worked on the instruments and the spacecraft over the years were there. And that was lovely to have everybody together. Um, and it was actually very emotional mm. to see it go. So sure. there were a few tears shed by people because you realize you can't touch it anymore. It's this thing you can't, you can't see it anymore. And that's, it's gone in its journey through the solar system you know, towards the sun and you'll never physically see it again. <laughs> so, yeah, it was odd to feel that emotional about a bit of space hardware, but <laughs> I think most people did. Yeah, yeah. understandable as well. Yeah. 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 It was scary as well. We were, we were quite nervous. Um, and then, you know, you've got this period that we've been going through the past 
months where it's being commissioned and things can go wrong at each stage um and there's blips and then there's you know it's it was quite a journey and we're, we're the spacecraft is on its way to venus um it'll reach there around christmas and do a flyby um stealing all that gravitational energy <laughs> <laughs> It will do the same with Earth and then it will get into its final orbit around the sun. So there's a lot of technical challenges still to get through. So step by step we'll yeah. get there to the final orbit. But yeah. it's yeah, it's nice to see it on its way to its uh, final destination. Fantastic, yeah. So you're still you have to keep tabs on that as on top of everything else that you do as well, Louise. Yeah, yeah. but it's been I say seeing the first image on Tuesday I'm was sure. um yeah. Yeah, it was wonderful. I mean, there's a lot of work needs to be done still. Um, so our first image was at um, 0.66 AU. So sort of two thirds the distance between the sun and the earth. So, and that's the closest the telescope has ever been. So wow. to the sun. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's quite special. Yeah, some achievement. Work, yeah. A lot of work from a lot of people around the world to get to this point. Fantastic. Well, I could ask you so many more questions, <laughs> Louise. Really, really interesting um, to hear all your answers to those questions. And thank you again um, no for joining us. I'm sure everyone at home um, has really appreciated your words of wisdom um, as well. So hopefully um, some more colleagues will join you in the office um, again <laughs> soon. Um, yeah, I hope I'll get to visit the planetarium yeah, soon. Yeah, well. that would be great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you very much, Louise. Well, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.